I thought it'd be nice. Let's take a few moments just to, as a kind of a buffer from the outer life of our activities, our work, our day, just as the sun is beginning to set on this uh, eclipse day of the, I think it's called the flower red moon, full moon. Uh, we can start to turn inward as well if, <clears throat> by closing the eyes and taking some breaths and giving our inner life some attention and care. It might be the first time today where you're coming home and turning inward and feeling that beautiful release of all the external structures and efforts that it take to, takes to be in this world of kind of like scaffolding falling away so that you're left with your own kind of simplicity and truth. Let's give rise to a heartfelt motivation for our life and our practice so that we may heal and be of benefit, help others heal. feeling the breath in the body, we'll spend, let's spend about 10 minutes in mindfulness practice, a simple shamatha, calm abiding, resting with the breath, alighting the mind, the attention with the flow of the in and the out breath. But without force, if there's any tension, <clears throat> any forcing, just to detect that with this kind of laser beam of your breath and then release with the out breath and settle more deeply into a, a simple, relaxed presence in the moment, in the belly breath. And feel your spine nice and straight and strong and the belly soft. So spine strong, belly soft, relaxed. Shoulders releasing <clears throat> down the back. Arms relaxed, palms on your thighs or in your lap if you wish. The chin slightly tucked in, lengthening the back of the neck, tip of the tongue resting at the upper palate, relax the jaw, face soft. The low back, the hips, the legs, comfortable, at ease.
If you find the mind asking, what am I doing or what should I do? The answer is release. <clears throat> release the thought, release the structure, the should. Even release the method and just see if you can rest in a simple being quality with the breath and the body. Releasing distraction with the out-breath. What should I be doing? Release. Release, release. 
So as you may know from time to time, maybe every four to six weeks, I'll offer the Feeding Your Demons, a guided personal process, you could call it. It's like a meditation, but it's also like a personal process. And um, it's a wonderful tool for meditators to continue their path, really, to help fuel and integrate the raw material of our being for our spiritual awakening. It's been a very important practice for me. And as a part of the five steps of feeding your demons, some of you may know already who've done it, <clears throat> the uh, fourth part is where we meet the ally. And the ally is such a beautiful moment there, that moment of meeting or inviting an ally, or sometimes the demon just transforms into the ally after we feed it this nectar of the whole dynamic of that we've done up until that point. And just like in the earlier steps of feeding your demons, this fourth step is really an invitation for the psyche to offer up imagery for us so that we can continue to learn about ourselves. Jung said that the, the subconscious communicates it through imagery. And so imagery is very important in our lives, of course, in many ways. It's also very much used in certain forms of meditation, uh, as well as in this process of feeding your demons. And so with the first few steps of the five steps of feeding your demons, which we're not going to do tonight, but um, just as kind of couching this practice of the ally work that we'll focus on tonight, the first step is feeling any kind of blockage or challenge that we might be going through or feeling. It can be however big or small you want. It can be just a little minor irritant. <laughs> or it could be a maha, you know, a great irritant. But the first step is to feel that block, that irritant in the body. You know, where do we hold our anger? Where am I holding my resentment? Where am I holding my fear? And, you know, fill in the blank. Where am I holding it? And that first step is in itself a healing step because then we get to be, oh, wow, I've been gripping my belly all day or well, my whole life. <laughs> and then the the process is the deepening of like, okay, befriending that. Like, okay, what's the color? What's the shape? What's the texture of that feeling? So we're not so much getting involved with the storyline of the irritant, you know. And we're more directly feeling it in a more somatic way. Then once it's felt, then the next step is to personify this energy, this block, this feeling, as a being in front of us. So give it shape, give it form, see what it looks like. Okay, what does this tight knot in my belly look like when I invite it out? So that in a sense I can defuse from it and then see it more clearly, you see? Like normally we're like this with our material. <laughs> and so feeding your demons helps us to defuse from it for a little bit. Like, okay, what does that material look like when it's out there? It might be a, a s s goblin or a ghoul or a infinity knot with a funny top hat, you know, whatever. It could be <laughs> anything. The imagination gets to play here. But we let it be organic. And then we ask it some questions like, what do you want? Then what's the deeper need beneath the want? And then how will you feel when you get what you really need? And then in the process, then the next step is to change positions and we actually get to become that feeling for a bit. Like we're not just looking at it over here anymore. We actually, it's very similar to the empty chair method of, of therapy where you get, you literally get up, move, and you take the seat of that energy. And you get to embody it. Oh, wow. What does that feel like? Facing your original position. So there's a, like a 
positional change and embodiment that happens through the changing of the position and the position in terms of the stance you take or are you coiled up or are you really trying to get big and scary like what does this energy feel like and then you while you're embodying that answer those questions oh what I want is what I need is when I get what I need I will feel so you're speaking for it from it and then after that happens you come back to your original seat and then from your original, you become your original self again, and you see that dynamic, that personified energy in front of you yet again. And then this moment of the the fourth step of feeding the demon to complete satisfaction and then meeting the ally is really like the gestalt, the thrust, the core of the whole practice. Because it's it, this is the part that's really based on the more traditional method called ch, which is based on early Buddhist teachings. And then um, it's a practice that de- was developed by the 11th century yogini named Machi Glabdran, a realized being who taught and was a teacher, a guru in Tibet. She blended the indigenous tradition of Tibet, more shamanic, with the uh, Mahayana and Sutrayana streams of traditional Buddhism from India and she she developed this practice called chut that's done with a drum and a bell and you sing and you but the whole visualization is very interesting where you in the chut practice the more traditional practice you imagine that you at a certain point as a healing practice you imagine that your consciousness shoots out up and out through the top of your head through the Brahma aperture, the crown chakra, and becomes a blue-black dancing dakini in space. And then that dakini is you now. You're no longer your old body. The old sack of bones falls to the earth like a bag of potatoes. (laughs) And then you as the blue-black dakini, fierce and awake, fully enlightened, dynamic energy, with your hook knife, which has so, all this beautiful symbolism, you take it and you you chop up the body and you put it in a skull cup, a kapala. And that body, through the heat of various alchemical, like seed syllables and all this visualization, you it, the body becomes purified into nectar. And that nectar, the transformed, the transmuted essence of what was just flesh and bone, your corpse, becomes a healing nectar. And as a daikini, you preside over the feast and you invite all beings. You invite your enemies, your debt holders, those you have karmic imprints, uh, karmic debts, not imprints, <laughs> karmic debts too, you know. Buddhas, bodhisattvas, protectors, beings from all the different realms, the hell realms, the hungry ghost realms, the animal realm, the human realm, the god realms, the jealous god realms, all the six realms. You you invite them to this feast of nectar. And the nectar is unending, and it satisfies them to complete um, satiation. And then they awaken to their true nature, they're healed, they no longer cause trouble, you know all your karmic debts are repaid, (laughs) all the disease-bearing beings stop causing disease. So it's a beautiful practice for pandemics, epidemics, like what we're going through now. And so this far out should visualization ceremony that's done with melodies beautiful some people here know know the practice too <laughs> um, is something that my teacher learned and then adapted for modern day practitioners as this feeding your demons practice so she took that gestalt of the the nectar the feeding 
nectar and healing beings through this visualized feast offering. And she kind of modernized it in these five steps of feeding a demon. So it could be more personal, right? So, okay, wait, where's my little demon in here? Where's my block, my irritant? Give it form, find out what it really needs, and then offer it this nectar. So this fourth step of offering the body stems from that ch practice, which means severance. You're severing attachment to ego fixation by offering the body. Not literally, <laughs> just a visualized practice. An intention, an alchemical uh, inner journey. And this moment in the fourth step where we release fixation on the body as who we really are and we offer it as nectar, we transform it, offer it as nectar, is based on the chid practice. And then so you feed this being until complete satisfaction. So whatever they need, whether it's milk, ice cream, maybe it's a big bowl of nectar that they jump into and devour or gobble up. So you imagine that you feed this nectar to complete satisfaction to the being, completely satiated. And it's through that offering, that feeding, not fighting. Normally we want to push away the things that are ugly or we don't want. The challenges, the so-called demons, our fears. So this practice is revolutionary, literally revolution. It turns the tables on that knee-jerk kind of instinctive way to work with challenges. And we turn towards it and we feed what it deeply needs most of all. Which is usually some form of care or love or acceptance. Usually it's pretty essence. And it's from that cathartic moment of feeding where that energy of the blocked irritant or so-called demon can transform into the ally. So that we're, we're using, it's like the same energy that's the problem becomes the solution. The demon becomes the ally. The, the obstacle maker becomes the healer, the teacher. And so we invite the ally into the space and we notice its qualities. And then we get to become the ally just like we got to become the demon we s literally switch positions and then embody the ally like are you holding a big triumphant banner or a sword are you 10 feet tall and luminous are you a redwood tree are you a butterfly are you a, a, a buddha and then you answer as the ally you give guidance to your normal self as the ally. So it's like you become the teacher. So you get to feel that. And then once that is complete, then you come back to your original seat for the fifth step, which is resting in awareness. It's receiving kind of the luminosity, the blessings of the ally. The ally dissolves into you, then you dissolve and you rest in open awareness. That fifth step is very contemplative. It's very non-conceptual. That's really where the meditation happens. The first four steps are more like process work, like personal journey work. And Eve and I both love this practice. We did a pilot study. Some of you were even in that pilot study. We found immense benefit with feeding your demons. Similar rates of decrease in depression and anxiety uh, as with mindfulness meditation. And uh, more um, self compassion, more perspective taking, more capacity to take perspective, you know, oh, that's a part of me, that's not all of me, a part of me is depressed, <laughs> part of me is angry, I'm not enveloped by it anymore, this perspective taking, so it's a really great, great process, and it's one that I love teaching, and so that's why we weave it in every once in a while in this Wednesday night class.
back in the early days when I first started with Against the Stream before we became SF Dharma Collective, uh, Noah Levine invited me in to just do Feeding Your Demons. For two years, I did Feeding Your Demons every Wednesday night. (laughs) And then I started doing Lojong, the slogans, and that was wonderful. And so that's what Eve and I have kept alive now that Eve joined joined me on these Wednesday nights. Now we hold it together, which works for both of us. And we've been making our way through those wonderful Lojong slogans, which, which are different but similar to what we do here with Feeding Your Demons. We're In all of these practices, we're learning to turn towards, ter- turn towards the adversity, turn towards the fire. Yeah. And so what I thought I'd do tonight, without further ado, is reveal another dimension of this practice to you, which is taking that fourth step of of meeting the ally and going on a journey with the ally. And normally you do this when you have done Feeding Your Demons, so you've got a kind of a little catalog of allies that you've met. (laughs) And I know a lot of you have done Feeding Your Demons, but even a few of you who've never done it before, can still do this because when you think about it, it doesn't take much thought, but we all have allies in our life, right? Whether it's uh, people or archetypes or spirit guides or, you know, deities, if you do contemplative practice like in the Hindu or Buddhist or Jain or other traditions, uh, the devotion towards Shiva or Parvati, or Ram, or Krishna, or, you know, Maitreya, or Avalokiteshvara, Tara, Saraswati. These could all, these are all allies. Or Jesus, Allah. The energies in our life where we feel uh, that we've been guided They can be visual or not visual. They can be a feeling sense. So I feel like this is a worthwhile process to do together, whether you've done Feeding Your Demons before or not. And what I'll invite you to do is to, at the beginning, I'll give you some time to feel into which ally in your life you would like to invite to guide you on this journey. And then I will guide you through it. So you close your eyes throughout the whole thing. And I will take you step by step through this. Uh, I think it's this is also this is a six step process. Take about a half an hour. And I want you to also, before we begin, think about something that you'd like to um, learn. I'm at a certain point. I'm going to have you ask the ally some questions. So you may know now, you may not know now, that's okay. But there might be a kind of a, a, a conundrum or a, a problem you're trying to solve or a choice you need to make or um, some little shadow area that you're not clear about. So you'll have a chance to ask for guidance from this ally, Okay. The ally doesn't have to go exactly with the problem. Don't overthink it. It's just very much an intuitive process. If you've done feeding your demons, you might think about an ally that you'd like to revisit and go deeper with. You know, maybe you had a very strong ally experience the last time we did this, and you'd like to kind of conjure up the ally, invite the ally back into the space. So you can do that as well. And I'll give you time to really connect with the ally, and then we'll go on the journey with the ally, I'd also like to invite you to get a journal or some paper because I'll give you time to to journal afterwards. So if you have something that you can write on, that would be nice. And then at the end, if we have time, we'll do a little mantra. Any questions or comments before we jump in? 
You can chat or unmute. Oh, I'm remembering something. Maybe Pam is going to ask it, but you'll want to have an empty space in front of you so when you switch positions and become the ally, you can not knock over your water bottle or your... Um, usually we say have an empty cushion or chair or when I tell you to switch positions, if you don't have something like that handy, you could just stand up and turn and face your original seat in a standing position. Just clear the space in front of you so that when you're in the process, you can keep your eyes closed as much as possible when I ask you to switch positions. Is there anything else? Think of it like you're going for a journey, you're going on a ride to a special place to meet somebody, a guide. Okay. So when you're ready, go ahead and close your eyes. Keep them closed as much as possible throughout the whole journey until the end. And if it's not comfortable to have your eyes closed, you can just have them slightly open, a comfortable angle towards the floor. And we'll begin by taking nine deep relaxation breaths with long exhalations. For the first few breaths, we'll breathe into physical tension in the body. Feel where you're holding physical tension in your body, hooking that tension and then releasing it with the exhalation. Now notice any emotional tension you're holding in your body. For the next few breaths, breathe into any emotional tension in your body, hooking that tension with the breath and release it with the exhalation. Now notice any mental tension you're holding. Notice where it's held in your body. Maybe mental tension, it feels like uh, thoughts of worries, concerns, mental blockages. And feel where you hold that mental tension in your body. Letting the breath hook that tension and release it with the exhalation. Now generate a heartfelt motivation to practice for the benefit of yourself and all beings. Now invoking the presence of the ally so feeling into the ally you'd like to invite here with you now. Could be an ally you met in a previous Feeding Your Demons practice or a different archetype or guide, Ishta Devata, 
Yidam, personal deity. And let the ally appear before you in your mind's eye. Feel that space opening and this ally appearing within that space. And notice the details of the ally, like its size, its color, What is the surface of its body like? Is it skin or fur or feathers? It's the texture of its body. Notice its density. Is it like a shimmering light or is it dense like a real physical body. And does it have a gender? What is its character like? Its emotional state. Notice the look in its eyes. Notice something about the ally you didn't see before. Now notice the environment around the ally. What kind of place is it in? And what is the feeling in the environment? Is it a place you've been? Is it on this earth or in another dimension? Can you see the time period? Which country it's in? And do you notice any smells or sounds?
And now imagine that the ally takes you on a journey to a special place. You follow, walking behind your ally. And notice what the path is like and how it changes as you proceed. Do you notice any smells or sounds? What is the feeling in the environment? And then you arrive at the special place the ally is taking you and notice where it is. What are the qualities of the place that surrounds you? What time of day is it? And what is the temperature? Are there any particular smells, sounds? What era is it? And how do you feel in this place? Does it remind you of anywhere you've been before? And your ally then explains why they brought you here and they explain what this place means to you. And now while you're here in this place with the ally, you'll ask any questions you have for the ally. You can ask one, two, several. And the way this works is that you can think of a question about whatever you would like guidance with from this ally. Ask the question out loud. And once you've asked the question, Slowly switch positions and take the empty seat in front of you and become the ally. And then answer the question from the ally's perspective, speaking as the ally. And then once you've answered that, you can come back, be yourself again, 
And you can ask another one. And same thing, switch positions, answer as the ally. So I'll set you free here for about five, ten minutes. You can just take your time to ask a question, switch positions, become the ally, answer. And so on. More questions might unfold. Let it evolve. And take your time. We'll do this in silence. And if you want, you can write down your question and your answer.
Maybe another minute. Now begin to come back to your original seat, if you're not there already. Coming back to your original position for the final time now. And take a moment to feel the help and protection that the ally has offered you. And now the ally turns away from you for a moment. And when it turns back, it is holding a gift for you. And the ally gives you the gift. And you hold it and you notice the details of the gift. The ally explains its meaning. And then the gift with all of its potency dissolves into your heart. And notice the feeling of the gift inside of you. Now see the ally in front of you and look into its eyes and feel its energy pouring into your body. As you feel the energy of the ally coming into your body, it spreads all the way down to the soles of your feet, to your fingertips and throughout your whole body. And now imagine that the ally dissolves into light. And notice the color of this light. And feel this light dissolving into you, integrating this luminosity into every cell of your body. 
And take note of the feeling of the integrated energy of the ally in your body. And now you, with the integrated energy of the ally, dissolve. Dissolve into light and rest in the state that is present after the dissolution. Just rest. And then now we'll slowly begin to come back, come back to your body, recalling the feeling of the energy of the ally in your body. And as you open your eyes, maintain that feeling of the energy of the ally in your body still. And we'll take a few minutes to just free write, do some journaling, whatever you'd like to note down, any revelations, any insights or imagery. Just let your hand put pen to paper and begin to move and journal for a few minutes now. Another minute or so.
Okay, so let's come back now. I hope you enjoyed your journey with the ally. If anyone wants to share anything, feel free. You don't have to, of course, but the uh, floor is open. Maybe just for five minutes or so we'll have some sharing and then we'll end with some mantra to Tara. Yes, Tanya, please. Can I unmute? Yeah. Yeah, so my um, ally was um, kind of this blue-green bikini-looking figure that um, represented somehow Mother Earth and, like, Mother Nature. Um, and, um, you know, she was loving and also a little fierce at the same time. And she said to me that she was my ultimate mother and that, I, and that I was like her child and that, you know, she's a part of me, I'm a part of her and that she loves me unconditionally and will always be with me. And, you know, so and because she's always within me, she's always, she's there and accessible. So I just had this real feeling of just like really loving support and embrace and you know, for me, being outside in nature is like, I can't describe how healing and supportive that is for me. So having her come up and remind me of that was just really lovely. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I could just really feel it. Um, so, yeah, and I asked her a few questions and she was very helpful. Mm -hmm. But I just really feel like, yeah, and you know, like, she, yeah, she's really in there. And like, I can really, she's there to support me. Yeah. So, oh, so wonderful. Thank, thank you. Thank, thank you, you so yeah. much. That's beautiful. Thank you, Tanya. Anyone else? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Machi Glabrin said that all of these demons and gods and even the allies are all a part of us. They're not separate. The psyche, the, the unconscious, you know, that we can understand it, ourselves through the imagery and the messages, and it helps to feel the other at times. And yet, we, just like Tanya said, she, they're in us, we are them, they are us, they're there with us. I remember after I was working towards getting my certification with this work and you have to do 108 sessions. And at some point in, I had a real visceral feeling of like, oh, I am my ally, <laughs> you know? My wisdom. And that's what really life is about, is becoming our own allies, really. Becoming our greatest allies, our greatest fans, <laughs> our greatest friends. Really believing in ourselves, giving us that confidence to walk our path, you know, to stand up straight and say what we need and be honest. So I hope there was some glimmer of something special and fun for you on this Wednesday night, you know, instead of watching Netflix, we can go on a journey with our ally. <laughs> it's so nourishing. It's always a journey well taken, isn't it? All right. 
Anyone else before we shift gears? So I want to share with you a beautiful mantra to the 21st Tara, who's the white Tara, white Tara. Sorry, that's probably making some annoying noises. And the mantra, I can't remember which one we did last time I was with you, but... Um, we might have done this one, but we'll do it again. And it's to White Tara as the long life, the longevity Tara. And I've been in really enjoying bringing this ally, you know, inviting her as ally for all of us. And even still in this pandemic and those suffering from COVID or residual side effects or even really any illness, any suffering can be um, healed by this loving light of Tara. In this particular expression, in her 21st manifestation, she's white like a, a million moons, you know, luminous white. And she's peaceful in disposition and uh, her love is boundless. Her metta is limitless. And so as we chant her mantra, which I guess I should give you, we imagine her light going to everyone, to all beings. Um, <laughs> I need to lean forward and type it in here. It's Om Tare Tutare Ture. Om Tare Om tare tutare ture marichie. Marichie literally means rays of light. And that's her name in Sanskrit is marichi. But this is marichie means to marichi. This is we're praying to her. Che brum. Brum is a, her long life seed syllable. Brum, brum. Many of the long life deities in Buddhism have the seed syllable brum, like Amitayas as well. Um, there are many different white Taras, different long life Taras, but this is uh, from this particular tradition. This is her mantra. Nrija, I'm still figuring out what that means. It could mean born from a lotus. It could also mean service of humans. It's In any case, we don't really usually translate mantras, but I wanted to give you a sense of what it sort of means. The Om Tari Tutari Ture means, O oh, Tara, please come swiftly, O oh, Tara. Tara Marichi, long life, please grant this. May it be so. Swa. Om Tare Tutare Ture Marichi Che Brum Nija Svaha. The C is an unaspirated C. In the Sanskrit, you have an aspirated CH and an unaspirated CH. So it's Marichi Che Brum Nija Svaha. Jason, if there's anything wrong with the sound, just chat it, chat it in. And close your eyes and just enjoy the sound. You can sing, hear your own voice in the space, or listen as you wish. Om Tare Tutare Ture 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 Om T
Tara's blessing rain down upon you, upon all beings everywhere. We dedicate any positive energy of our practice together for the benefit of all beings, near and far, seen and unseen. Thank you. So, that is my offering. I hope uh, it nourished your soul. <laughs> and Mace has posted the Dana, the monetary offering option for you there to support the Sangha. Every little thing adds up. And hope hopefully someday we'll be in and together in person. Even I have talked about meeting in the park one day, maybe on a weekend. So we'll be in touch and that could be fun on a sunny day. Maybe I'll bring my harmonium and we can meditate and talk and connect and chant to the divine Thank you, thank you. Good. Yeah, Mace likes that too. Pamela. Feel free to unmute. We're we're saying good night now if anybody wants to just say goodbye. You can unmute and say good night. It's great to be thank here always with you. Again. Chandra. Thank you, everybody. Mm. Lovely, lovely. Very lovely. Oh, wonderful, Diana. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Om Tare Ju Tare Ture Swaha. If, any, if you want to do more chanting this um, Friday, I think at 1.40, I'm a part of this like 24-hour Om Mani Padme Hung mantra festival to raise funds for Tibetans in India and Nepal who are um, experiencing COVID-related illness and threats so we're we're doing a fundraiser all money but me all money but me all money but me so i i'm going to do 20 minutes of just singing it's a facebook live event you can you know i do post these things on my facebook page and my instagram page which is lopen chandra 
L O P O N C H A N D R A. So you find find me there if you ever wonder what I'm up to. I'm doing various things like that. And that's this Friday at one forty Pacific time. Yeah. You read my mind because I was just thinking during that chanting, I was, it'd be so lovely to do more chanting. So. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I'll be doing more chanting too. I have the same feeling. It's like, oh, when I think about like, what do I want to do? Oh, I want to chant. Okay. <laughs> you know, it's my sadhana. <laughs> What's my morning practice? Oh, chanting. So it is so helpful these days. So yeah, join Friday, 140. I'll try to bring this in when I teach here on Wednesday nights as much as I can. And um, also on Sundays, once a month, I work with a wonderful woman, Nina Rao, and she's beautiful, ch chanteuse, you know, does kirtan style, and she um, she sings and I sing and we tell stories and we meditate and that's through Tibet House on the East Coast and um, all that's on my website so you can find my schedule at chandraeaston.com uh, it's my new 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 forming website it's kind of it's basic right now but we'll add more pages but it's got the link to my schedule and classes and stuff like that and then we're talking to the Dharma Collective about doing more of this stuff too so we're finding ways to do it in-house so make yourselves heard you know if you like something let us know because we don't know what people want sometimes and we if this is something that you like it's helpful for me to to know and then i'll try to offer it more and i have musician friends in the bay who would when we start meeting and in uh, in person, it'd be more fun to play in a group. And yes, the feeding your demons, right? We had the ally process. I'm getting texts in the chat that people enjoyed that. Good. So as you, as I said earlier, we'll do the feeding your demons or ally work. You know, every four to six weeks, I try to weave it in. Yeah, more feeding your demons. Good. I'm glad you like that. And we can do more. We, sometimes we'll do a longer workshop, like we could do a, two and a half hours or something, where we go a little deeper with the work. We can uh, do art, too. We could do art with this ally process. The imagery is so rich. and You can sketch or paint or draw or sculpt the imagery that comes up in these processes, too. That's interesting for some people. That brings up a whole slew of demons for, I'm sure, a lot of other people, <laughs> too. Like, oh, my God, my art demon creativity demon we all have them right like the critic you can feed that demon to complete satisfaction and then meet your ally around that i've had clients and friends who've brought this work into writing circles writing overcoming writer's block uh, creative blocks they can work with physical illness or chronic pain with this process of feeding your demons so there's a lot of wonderful avenues but now I'm talking on and on. I know we have to go to bed. So good night, everybody. Great to be with you, as always. Thank you. Thank thanks, you, Chandra. Thanks, Chandra. Thanks, everybody. Good. That was lovely. Really nice. Good. You know I'm always a fan of chanting.